Hey, how's it going? And today I just wanted to give an update to a tutorial I did a while back on what I was calling the ultimate UI widget. And I still think that's a really great system, but it's just for one image. And what I'm trying to do is get it so that we can dynamically change images, an array of images, you could say. So that's what we've created here. There's a couple little quirks about it, but overall it works just fine. I'll show you what this looks like. So I'll go into the game. And I just have one trigger device, that's all. And the rest of this is in the verse code. So when I go over that trigger, it's going to initialize the UI and a default image is gonna come on the screen. Now, if you didn't want that to happen, because it wants to be initialized with an image, you could just put a transparency in there. So that'd be one workaround if you didn't want this. But this first time over the trigger initializes the UI. And so a default image comes up, right? And now I've just subscribed to turning the visibility off and on. So it's gonna, the next time over the trigger, it's gonna switch to another image. And then it's gonna get into this normal pattern of showing an image, a random image, and then toggling the visibility off and on. So the next time I go over the trigger, you'll see we get another image. And now I go over it again, it's gonna go off. And now we're in this pattern of a random image coming up. There's three images what I have, and then turning off. So this toggles the visibility off and on, but there's three different images on there. And these are actually images. So these images are 256 by 256 pixels, and they were imported into Unreal Editor. So they're, they come in as assets. So that's all this does right now. So it's just a kind of a work in progress, but it's to show you that you can dynamically change the images and you could change the text at the same time. So, hey, look, it's a full moon. <laughs> so let me just show you this in the code real fast. I'll kind of just walk over this. I'll leave this on the screen so you can study it. So what we did was we imported here in our contents folder, let me clear that, three images. And like I said, these are 256 by 256 pixels. And then in the code, these come up as assets. You need to add this assets module here, and if we click under here under assets, you'll see them in there, right there. And then what we do is we put them into an array. My project name's kind of weird, so you could make the project folder an easier name than what I have it named. But then you just put it in an array, and then we create a texture here, and that's what we need to initialize this texture block and it requires a default image and apparently a default size. So that's why I say if you didn't want that, you could just put a transparent image in there just so if you didn't want something to display. And then this I, this is very similar, all the rest of this is very similar to the previous tutorial where we have my overlay, my UI, and, and here it's a little different how I have it set up. I have this the trigger event on an await so that this just fires off once to initialize the UI. We can only have this fire off once, so it fires off just one time. But then we subscribe to this toggle down here on the bottom. So kind of the trick of this whole thing is that here when we create this variable for the texture block, we need to put these values into it, these default values. And then down here, all the rest of this is pretty standard pretty standard, get the UI and add the UI and all that. And then down here on create UI, this is all pretty standard too. And notice that we're referencing my displayed image down here, right? And then what we can do though, is down here on the toggle switch where we turn the visibility off and on, what we do is we go ahead, we have to call the image array because we created this array up here, right, of the images. And you could have as many images in here as you wanted, 10, 20 or whatever we have to call it with an if statement, then we get that image out, and then we can call my displayed image, set image, and then use my image, and this will update what you see. So this is how we can dynamically work our way through an array. Now right now I just have this set up to do it randomly, but you could set this up to loop through in a logical fashion, or you could have it set up to call however you wanted it to call. So there's a lot of different things you can do. So I'll just leave this on the screen if you wanna get a screenshot of it. That's the top half, and this is the bottom half. And that's all I had for today. I hope you found it helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.